Hello, everybody. Welcome to State Champs Poolside Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Jolkeski, head coach at Bloomfield Hills High School and a member of the Michigan Interscholastic Swim Coaches Association. My co-host, Lauren Plant, is out this week, but uh, we look forward to having him back very soon. And today on the show, we've got two very special guests from Northville High School, two teammates. We've got Emily Roden and Laurel Wozniak. Ladies, welcome. Glad to have you. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So before we get into it, uh, I want to recognize our sponsors. Poolside is presented by Lawrence Technical University. Lawrence Tech wants you to recruit yourself. Just go to ltuathletics.com and click on the Recruit Yourself link. Academic and athletic scholarships are available in over two dozen varsity sports. Poolside is also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics and by the physical therapy and sports medicine professionals with Detroit Medical Center. Our Game Changer segments are back. Check out our YouTube playlist by searching State Champs TV or go to our website, statechampsnetwork.com for great insight on training tips and more. And for immediate care, go to dmc.org slash Game Changers. We're grateful for those sponsors each week, uh, giving us an opportunity to talk some great swimming. And uh, we're here with uh, two ladies who are in the pool and, and a very dominant program doing some great things. So uh, I assume you guys were in the water at least once today. So uh, Laura, why don't you start off? Uh, what, what's the vibe right now in the pool deck? How's the energy and, and where, where's your team at? Yeah, well, I mean, if you can't tell, I've got some wet hair right now. We had practice tonight. Um, but the energy this year, I think, has been very optimistic because we knew that we had missed out on so much last year. Um, and so going into it, especially with, um, we kind of had like two sets of freshman classes because the sophomores last year didn't really get to experience it. Um, and so especially like being a senior this year and leading kind of like half of the group, not really knowing um, how things go, it was a really good opportunity to kind of change things that we wanted to um, and set us on like a positive path initially and really get the energy going um, quickly. And so we had a lot of, I think we had like three meets at the beginning of the season before school started um, that were like inner squad and um, some a relay meet. And those were really fun to like get the vibe of the good energy flowing for fun, but also um, kind of get the feel for how a meet works. And we've had a lot of our dual meets have be, have been really dominant in some of our performances. Um, and those are, for me, I really enjoy them because they are, you know, you get that feeling of competition, um, but also it's, you're competing once every week at least. Um, and so that rapid competition really keeps you on your toes and you remember how to race like you're not waiting like club season is like a few weeks in between meets and you know you don't get that feel but with high school season you're constantly sprinting all the time and that's why i love high school season um but yeah we had one of our we had a county meet last week and that was the first meet that we really suited up at suited up at um and we had like seven more state cuts made there um and so now we're getting into the part of the season where we can suit up and get feel for championship season. So I'm really excited. Excellent. Emily, what else would you like to add? How, how's, how's everything going on the pool deck? Yeah, just practices have been really good. Um, we're getting to that part where we work hard like every single week. So a lot of us are very tired, but the energy is still very high. And when we're working hard, we even push each other harder and we hold each other accountable and we just start really working hard in the water and outside of the water um, where we had like the PSAT today. And like, so we have a lot of um, schoolwork and we're keeping each other on top of it. And then we're also lifting and stuff, which is really fun. Um, that's where we can definitely see a lot of progress because we're increasing weights every week. So um, yeah, we're just pushing each other and it's the atmosphere is good and everything's going well. Good. So, you know, you, and then we'll go back to you on this one uh, and then Laurel, you can jump in, but you guys had PSATs today. You probably mm -hmm. had morning practice. You probably had a meet or if you didn't, you probably have one coming up. We're really in the thick of it. You know, I know my, my girls are 
you know, they're, they're struggling right now, day to day. You guys have got a few kids out sick. Um, talk to, talk to everybody out there. You know, you, you're putting in a lot of hours. You're probably in the building mm-hmm. more than just about any other team. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing to keep the energy up? What are you doing? You know, you, you talked a little bit about how you're taking care of your teammates, but uh, elaborate on that a little bit, Emily. Yeah. So one thing that's definitely important to us is like being healthy in and out of the water. So keeping your body healthy first, um, that's definitely with nutrition. Like that's something we're focusing on a lot this year. Um, me and my, like I'm holding myself accountable and each other, like, um, learning what helps us before and after practice, what helps us before and after meets, um, definitely getting enough sleep because waking up at 5 a.m. definitely is uh, rough on the body. So um, getting enough sleep, getting the naps in, and balance is key. So be, knowing when to get your homework done and because you know you're going to have practice every day, twice a day. So keeping a schedule um, and just planning everything out and just having that balance is really important. That's good. So, Laura, you know, we, we've got – kids at home that are listening, everybody kind of has their own unique approach to training and stuff like that. What does a week look like for your team? Oh, well, so this is something that I've known for a while um, since I've swam for most of my life, but we have doubles three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning. Um, This year we switched things up. So now we have our Monday, Wednesday practices are lifting in the morning um, and our Fridays are swimming. And I, I think that is, for me, it has worked out really well because we have a full hour to really focus on what we're doing in the weight room, especially with our weight room recently got updated and it's super nice now. So we get a lot of um, benefits from that. But um, so we have morning practice, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and afternoon practice, Monday through Friday, and then practice on Saturday, all of which are two hours. Um, and Thursdays, we usually have our dual meets and coming out of, I know this is in the thick of it, the last three weeks, we had two meets each week. We had a meet Thursday and Saturday. Um, we also had like two weeks ago was counties, excuse me. And then last week was Miska's. Um, and looking at the calendar in August, I uh, I had seen that and I was like, wow, that's going to be a rough patch. Like that's really going to be boom, boom, boom. We're getting, getting into it then. Um, and now I realize that that has passed and it feels good because I'm always on my toes and in kind of being forced to being up to a schedule um, because I have, my classes are still very hard this year and balancing that homework and knowing when to do it and getting it done so that I can still get my eight hours. Like I love counting my hours, making sure I'm getting enough. Um, so fitting those in all as well as maintaining like a good diet, like and rolling, stretching, drinking water, all that works up or builds up and helps me um, maintain the schedule that I have. Um, and yet still have time, like free time to myself um, to have social athletic and school life. Um, which I think uh, that's a really big thing is because we have uh, such good people on the team. We can also have that social balance within our program because we're we're all pretty close together all the time. So we kind of <laughs> learn how to do that. That's good. How, how are you guys handling uh, just the day-to-day in the water? I know some of my girls are like, can I trade my teammates or my lane mates in for just one day? I need a break. You know, how, how are you guys handling? I mean, you're, you're looking at a black line for two hours. The little mm-hmm. bit of time you get, you're up close and personal with the teammate. Uh, I'm sure there's ready there's some days you're ready to dunk some people underwater. So how are you handling some of that? Uh, I don't know. You love your teammates, but then you, you're kind of happy to maybe get a little space. How are you handling that? I think um, a lot of it, I think, like, how I think my relationship with my sisters is I love them to death, but when I see them a lot, they they get on my nerves and you realize <laughs> – you know how they work and um, mm-hmm. things that bother them, the things that bother you. Uh, and when you spend so much time together, you start to realize those things, um, which, yeah, can be good because when you have like even five seconds on a wall to like a minute, whether it's like in between a set or like um, in between a uh, round or whatever it is, you're probably telling like a story, little snippets of a story at a time because you only have so much time to tell. Um, or it can be, 
you know, bickering about what is go what's going on the set. Um, but I, I'd say anything that really goes on is just small things because you're just exhausted and you, you're all putting in the same work and you're doing the same um, work out. So you understand that we're all struggling just as much. Uh, but then you get out of the water and it's just back to good old, good old friendliness. Good, good. Emily, what do, you, what do you want to share there? You got, you got a few uh, giggles there in the back. What do you want to share? Yeah, um, we're definitely like sisters. We bicker like sisters. We are together every day like sisters. Um, you know, like today we did a bunch of 500s and those can be very boring, like talking in between, just like sharing about your days, like the little things um, definitely help you get through practice together. But we're a family and even though we fight, we always come back and there's days like sometimes when we have recovery days, he lets us switch up the lanes and like do fun lanes. And so we get to see more people and, but we're a big family and uh, no matter like what little fights happen, we always come back together, but spending a lot of hours together, definitely <laughs> little things come up, but all in all, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I think having that tight, cohesive group, um, has helped establish that culture that you have. You guys are currently ranked second in the state on our MISCO rankings and the Swim Cloud rankings. Um, and before we get to end of the season stuff, I want to go back and, and touch on a, a dual meet you guys had a couple weeks ago against Brighton. Uh, came right down to the end, and uh, if memory serves me right, uh, I think we tied, right? We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you feel? I mean, that relay is coming down. Was it down to the last relay? Or was it kind of, where, where were you at? And just give me some of the vibes about, you know, that, that meet. Um, I think it came down to a, a lot of things. So it, I don't think it was necessarily like just the last relay. Um, I know a, we focus a lot on doing our part. And so those points could come from anywhere in a meet, even if it's, um, cause I know a good thing about our team is that we have a lot of depth. And so those places of, it doesn't have to be first or second or third, like all places, you, the places that score are important. And so um, everybody who does their part matter matters. And um, that last relay, I think um, probably would have changed it, but I think it was like set up to tie. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but that was, uh, I've never experienced a tie in my high school career. I didn't like, I didn't think about it being possible. Like I've seen soccer and I know you tie and I'm like, since when do you tie, you know, like there's a winner. <laughs> um, so that was, it was interesting. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It was, I mean, wasn't the best not winning, but at the same time it was, at least we didn't lose. <laughs> So Emily, to talk a little bit about your experience, but also the fact that, again, you guys are ranked second, and right now in our rankings, Brighton's third. So this is something that's going to go on at league meet, and you're going to state meet. So Emily, talk a little bit about the dual meet, and then kind of building that energy to the end of the season now. Yeah, well, Brighton is always one of our like biggest competitors, so we were all pretty ready to swim it. Brian hyped us up a little bit, and... Um, we had had a hard week before that. He didn't really like lighten up on us or anything. So we were all pretty tired in the beginning of the meet. Like it was just normal. And as we realized that the score was getting closer, that's um, I think when we realized that like energy has to be high, no matter what, every meet, like everyone swim counts, everything. And um, the accountability thing, like everyone can score points. Like you don't have to be first, second or third, like it all matters. And so as we got closer and closer, the screams got louder and the coaches were running around the pool deck and the scores were getting written, calculating numbers in your brain. And everyone was screaming like, okay, you can do it. You got it. Like we can all do it. And so the energy got really, really high. And that's when we all realized like, okay, like this needs to be the energy for every single me. And it had been pretty good and but like this one was by far one of the best ones we've had in the end and um that last relay like our coaches came up to us grabbed us by the heads and was like okay girls like we gotta do this like if we win it we'll tie it but our b relay you guys need to go as hard as you can as well because there's a possibility that we could win yada 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 
So everyone was screaming, everyone was cheering, everyone went really, really fast and we ended strong and none of us were really upset, but it was like bummer not winning, but it was still good that like at the end we all came together and just like had a good time, swam really, really fast and just enjoyed it. Yeah. And I think a lot of that in the Oh God, please. I'm sorry. Um, a big thing for me is I was really happy that we had that experience mm -hmm. because it brought that um, that sense of competition about what the end of the season is really going to look like. Because like you said, there's going to be more competition when it comes to conferences and states. Um, and so to really see that for the whole team to experience that, I think was a big thing because not everybody knows what that feels like. Um, and so seeing that really helped push us to get that energy motivated. And so I'm hoping that going into um, conferences, since that is sooner, um, and scoring is a little different in that, in that sense of um, conference type meet, uh, I'm hoping that people, you know, step up and we all do our part and it pushes us all. Um, but I'm excited to see where that, you know, hopefully we'll take that and use it as fuel towards our next races. Yeah. You know, I, we're in the OA red and I see all our division two teams, Adam, Seaholm, Groves, Farmington, they're all going to be competing at that D2 mm -hmm. meet. And I feel like you guys, Brighton, Pioneer's right around the corner there. Uh, you know, Mercy's right down the street. You, th that side of town, we got a lot of powerful D1 teams and you guys see each other in you know, multiple times throughout the year. So it's going to be exciting. We're really looking mm -hmm. forward to it. Um, so we're three weeks out. Um, I, at least we are. Our girls are. I assume, I assume your league meets pretty close to. Uh, where are things at? You, you ladies are individually qualified for state meet. Are we starting to split off on training? We got different groups, different focuses. What's happening? Yeah, so um, <laughs> so we just actually, it was this week, um, we have a lot of girls on our team. So um, we were split a little bit in the beginning, but now is when we take our like A team and split it off into conference team and then JV team. And conference team is in the weight room for a little bit longer and um, we're still training hard and stuff like that. And then soon we'll split into conference team and then state team and then state team will just continue to um, do weights and um, work for a little bit longer. But uh, when we split off into conference team, like obviously we're a big family already, but um, as you get like into smaller and smaller groups who are going to select meets together, you, you definitely get like closer and um, we can start mixing the lanes a little bit depending on stroke and uh, when the group is smaller, it's easier to like cheer for everyone and you get to go on the same intervals and like um, race a lot and go off the blocks and stuff like that. So yeah, right now we're broken up into conference team and JV team and then soon we'll go to conference team and state team. But hopefully a majority of that conference team will be on state team as well because we have a very good group going to states right now. Um, so that's very, very exciting. And we know that more will get their cuts at our conference meet. Um, so that's really exciting. What about you, Laurel? What do you think? Um, well, like you said, our girls team is like 90, 90 something usually. Um, and so getting to know everybody um, is, you know, one of my goals, um, especially as a senior is to get to know everybody. But seeing uh, the conference team split up, or conference and JV, you know, you get uh, to, we're continuing in the weight room, I think, for like another week or two. Um, and we, now we're getting into those like really push ourselves type sets. Um, and then once we also do um, some yoga, because I think that's a really important thing that we, we have um, incorporated into our uh, practices is also race visualization um, and to get us prepared. So also getting us in the mindset for this championship season that's coming up, which is sooner rather than later, I'm <laughs> realizing. Um, but we, I think in like three weeks is when state team will start to split up, but we also kind of have like a group of like hopefully accepted state team swimmers because we know that they can do it. Um, and every everybody trains differently, so everybody's rest needs to be different. 
Um, and even though we don't, uh, uh, some of us don't like rest for conferences, it still tends to be one of our best meets just because every, you can feel the energy there and that solely gets you going. Um, and so that's why conferences is one of my, probably one of my, one of my favorite meets um, and tends to be one of our best as well. That's great. Awesome. So uh, individual goals, Emily, what are you, what are you looking at uh, next few weeks and all the way to state meet? What are you looking at? Yeah, so um, this whole season, I've just been focusing on like really working hard and um, working on my mindset a lot, uh, going into each practice, um, focusing on the little technique, every practice, um, especially in the long sets that can get not necessarily boring, but are just a lot of yardage, like working on little things like your turns and keeping your hips up. But going in the next few weeks, um, when I start to race a lot more, definitely working on the little things I work every day at practice, like my walls, and I'm working on my underwaters a lot. So in my fly and free, definitely both that. I have like jokes going on with my coaches, how many kicks I need to do off the walls and stuff like that. So um that's definitely and then just swimming as fast as I can and uh oh, personal best um <laughs> obviously but just re if I really incorporate everything um I think I'll definitely get there that's good you still focused in I think what 200 free and 100 fly last year at state meet is that still a game plan yeah um that's I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be at states and then maybe at conferences I'll swim 2 IM and 100 fly because um I've been working on my IM just like yeah, so those are the things. Good. Pretty good. Laura, what about your goals here? Short term and then getting to your state meet. Um, so this season I've been working on really rounding out my capabilities of um, because I realize we swim a lot and being able to contribute to my team more than just um, my singular like best freestyle events um, really means a lot to me because I know that also training um, more than just freestyle helps me too. Um, and so I've been swimming a lot more non-freestyle events at meets and accomplishing a lot of my smaller goals there. Um, but with my larger individual goals that come up into like conferences and states, I, I find that I can't really set myself a time goal because that is when like I've worked on my mentality, like Emily said, so much um, that when I get like a time in my head, it ends up like working against me. Um, and so when I can work on those small things it, uh, and like make them have it, th those will eventually come like to me easily when, um, when I'm swimming a race and I can really just focus on getting up and getting out and working on um, my motivation right up until I get onto the block. Um, and so that's what, a big thing that's been motivating me was being able to accomplish a lot of my um, smaller goals that I haven't been able to like swim in the past uh, like three years. Um, so all of those have kind of contributed to help me accomplish my bigger goals. That's great. That's great. So you're, uh, you're locked in here. I locked in for hope next year, right? Um, talk to us a little bit, uh, I don't know, the decision and uh, you know, what, what you're looking forward to stuff like that. Well, the process was definitely one of the most stressful things I've ever done. Um, <laughs> And I know that was especially hard for me um, during COVID because I knew that I needed to see places. Um, I'm definitely much of a more interactive learner and not being able to do that at first, all the schools looked the same. I couldn't really tell the difference between what I wanted. I wasn't really sure what I wanted because I wasn't really getting a consistent season to like make up my mind. Um, and I, I always knew that I still feel really young, like I'm still a child and I, I'm not at my best. And I know that I can get better and that's what I wanna do in college is to get better. And I know that for me, in order to get better is the school will make that happen for me. And I decided that I, I wanted to go the D3 route because the balance of academics and swimming would get me successful and motivated in both ways. Because I find that once I'm like successful in the classroom, I'm also succeeding in the pool. Um, and so having those go hand in hand, um, I realized that the D3 route would probably be best for me. And I also found that 
my um, the D3 colleges that I was looking at, I also had found my the best relationship with coaches. And that was a huge thing for me um, is seeing that they really cared about me. And so Tabor, the coach for Hope, had um, initially gotten me like falling in love with this school and I hadn't even been there. And I, I went to school, went to campus and they say it, but it's true. Like I felt like home um, and hearing what their goals were um, for the next few years really got me motivated because I know that I'd, I knew that I'd be working towards something and really contributing to the team. So I could see, you know, see, see that progress and hopefully make an impact as not just you know, a swimmer with times, but as a person and as a leader, hopefully. Um, and every day I just get more and more excited about my decision and more, more positive. And um, it's just, yeah. I, I, I can feel the energy in your voice. I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> for you. I share that with my high school girls all the time. If you get a chance to go and compete in college, you should. Emily, what are your plans here? I know you're only a junior, but what uh, are you starting to look? You're thinking about swimming. What do you want to do? Yeah, um, I I think I decided that I would like to swim in college, and um, I am talking to some schools and um, planning visits and stuff like that, which is really exciting. I just think um, when I think about it, swimming has been in my life for so long, and I want to go into college with a team, and I want to be able to like have the team for four years, like a good group of girls. Like I love this team more than anything, and I can't imagine going to a whole new place without one so that's a big factor and I'm excited to continue working hard and achieving more goals and setting more goals and meeting new coaches and learning new techniques and new sets and stuff like that so I'm really excited for college a little bit farther away but I'm excited enjoy it enjoy it yeah. i feel like the process is getting quicker and quicker so mm -hmm. ladies I, I love spending some time with you today i'm super excited uh brian's a longtime friend of mine so i'm always i always know we can see some special stuff on the pool deck with you guys and uh, we wish you all the best here as we we wind down the season um so in closing uh that's our show for this week uh really appreciate laura laura wozniak and emily roden from northville joining us again all the best of luck to you ladies and remember, uh, you can either watch or listen to our Poolside podcast. The video upload uh, is weekly on our website, social media, and YouTube channels. Um, or you can listen to the audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts. The show is uploaded on Fridays. I want to thank uh, our sponsors, Lawrence Technical University, Michigan High School Athletic Association, and DMC Sports Med Medicine and Physical Therapy team. Lauren will be back with me next week. So we'll see you next time on State Champs Michigan Poolside podcast. Good night, everybody.